Elise, Hecarim, Cassiopeia, Draven, Ari, and finally, no, sorry, that, that was bad. Dun, dun, da, Velkaz. Hey guys and gals, I'm Pal, and welcome back to Okami. Last episode, we completed the Kamui Devil Gate Trial Cave, got the 99th Stray Bead, and raced with Kai, not exactly in that order. This time, we're going to be entering the Ark of Yamato, and just to be clear, that is the Spider qu Queen, that is the Crimson Helm, Orochi, Blight, um, Ninetales, and finally the Ark of Yamato. Just to be clear that I that there was no confusion there in my mind. So anyway, uh, let's go ahead and jump down here, because we can indeed go on to the melted lake of Yoichi. What am I on? Like... Oh, wait, what? Wait, what? <laughs> wait, what? They're... Oh, cool! <laughs> that was... That was very coincidental. I didn't even know the secret was here. Like, really, I did not know. Um, okay. Some more, um, some more money. Actually, that's, that's a good topic. That's a very good segue into what I w want to talk about. I have a lot more money than I did last episode! And that's because, if you look at my items here... I actually purchased them, some things, sold some things off. I just want to make sure that I have almost even numbers of everything. So I have 30 vengeance slips, 30 of these, 15 of these, all that stuff. It's it's really quite nice to see something this well-rounded. And I feel like the items I have now are good. I also did some grinding. Um, I definitely did some grinding in the Devil Gate Trial Cave because you can, you can constantly go back and fight enemies. So I did that, and let's see. Oh man, now it's not going to be even. So, I now have 70, uh, sorry, 70,000 yen, and that's because we're going to be doing some big purchases, and by big, I mean really big. I probably won't have this amount of money by the end of the episode. Uh, let's see, we can just jump down here, right? Yeah, we can. Okay, so let's run on here. I've already equipped the, the water tablet, so let's run over here to the Rainbow Bridge. There's still some floating chunks of ice, and we can actually see in Lake Yoichi, see exactly how deep it is. It is really deep. I, I can't even see the bottom, and it it's just a straight drop-off. There is no shore. It just immediately goes straight down. I can really see why this would be seen as the birthplace of evil, just because of how abyssal this is. I mean, especially for this society, no one has ever seen the bottom. They don't even know that it has a bottom. You know, because you have to consider, this is, this is very early Japan, if you're going to compare it with Earth's time. It's it's very, very early Japan. Also, camera, what? That's something I won't miss, is the camera. Okay, I'll de-equip the water tablet real quick. Uh, we won't need the peace spell, so I'll just go straight to Thieves' Glove. Actually, instead of Thieves' Glove, I'm going to do Fire Tablet because it'll be more useful. And plus, we get that cool aura. Okay, all of my preparations are done. Um, now, you might be asking, uh, pal, there's one last stray bead. And there's also that big purchase you're talking about. Well, just don't fret. It will be fine if you head in here. Those things will still be available to us. Well, wait. Wait, Ami. You know what'll happen if you cross this rainbow bridge and board the Ark of Yamato, don't you? I mean, that boat is bad news. The people of K Kamui all know that. It's the most hated and feared thing in all the land. Even legends have nothing good to say about it or Leochi Lake. And you know there's no turning back once you board that thing. Huh? You look like you want to say something. Resolve? You mean you've, you've got the resolve to pass the point of no return? Do I have the resolve to pass the point of no return? Yes. I see. Well, I guess this is it then. Ami. Don't you go dying like you did 100 years ago. I will do my best not to. I am weaker than Shirinui was, and is, if you consider the fact that we just saw Shiranui a couple episodes ago, but I will try my hardest. Okay. Well, wait a sec, Kami. Um, well, we've been through a lot together. How long has it been since we first met? It all started with Sakuya. Then we laid the smack down on Orochi, then that fox wench. We even went inside an emperor's body and traveled to the bottom of the sea. Then, before I knew it, 
I found myself back in my own land. And now it all ends with the appearance of the legendary Ark. But for you, it's just the start of an even greater adventure. Sorry, Ami. I'm afraid this is where we say goodbye. As I told you from the beginning, I joined you so that I could steal those 13 brush techniques of yours. We found them all during our travels. And now each and every one has been etched into my mind. It's not like I've mastered them yet, but I plan on having loads of fun with my newfound skills. It's all a bit sad to see you go, but you gotta do what you gotta do. Take care of yourself, pal. No, Ami, no. Look, you're a god, I'm a sprite. We live in completely different worlds. The road ahead may be a tough one, but it's one you're just going to have to walk alone. <laughs> I know, I know. It's just... I got things I need to do, you know? Now, let's wrap this up. I can't stand long goodbyes. Farewell, my furry friend. Hold it right there, furball! How many times do I have to tell you? We gotta go our separate ways. Now, leave me alone, you thick-headed lump of fur. He's right, Mashare. Your way lies with this Ark. You again! At last! At last, a path to the heavens has opened up. Oh, fan uh, fantastic! How long have I yearned for this moment? Two hundred years? No, it must have been much longer. Bah! What are you babbling on about now, you big fruitcake? A path to the heavens? On that creepy old hunk of junk? What a fitting exit for a half-baked prophet like you. I have no idea what you're up to, and frankly, I don't care. I'm not a part of this anymore, so I'm gonna split. Have fun, you two. Afraid of the legendary arc, are we? What did you say? Well, if you must go, then go. Besides, only those worthy of the trip to the heavens may board the fabled Ark of Yamato. You never had a ticket, and you never will. Why, you witless, two-bit, half-baked prophet! You're just, go you're just trying to trick me into getting on that stupid boat. I'm not gonna fall for something like that. I'm no fool. So there. Wait a sec. I know. Maybe I should just hop on board your little boat. Yeah, and then I should tear the place apart a, a little as a little parting gift to you. <laughs> Don't blame me. I already told you. Only those worthy of the trip to the heavens may board. But you didn't need me to tell you that, my little bouncing friend. You know very well why you can't board this Ark. Do I not speak the truth, little celestial envoy? Well, it's about time. My little friend, I have another prophecy for you. 
Listen up, because this will no doubt come in handy for you. It takes two to tango. The bond of the brush shall intercede. I thought I'd give you the long version since it was my last. Pretty good, don't you think? He couldn't even see it. Those unwilling to fulfill their own destiny cannot board the ferry to the celestial plane. Life is all about resolve. Outcome is secondary. It is resolve that determines the value of your life. You have no doubt met many such resolute people in your journeys. Well, my little bouncing friend, I must bid you adieu. Shall we, Mashare? We have a date with Destiny, and we mustn't keep her waiting. And thus, we board the Ark of Yamato without our trusted friend Isun, and Waka's nowhere to be seen. For the first time, we are truly without Isun. There's only been one other instance where I, I could say that we've been alone, and that was when we were in Isun's own hometown. But he was right nearby. He was quite literally two feet away. But this time, he's far. He can't get in. My goodness, I can hardly believe it. My eyes may have enveloped and been enveloped in darkness all this time, but I know when I see a divine being before me. Okami Amaterasu, you've returned home. I, Marco, would like to welcome you on behalf of all Celestials. Celestial being. Marco. Plier. Oh, I made a mistake. I said you'd returned home, but of course I was wrong. This is the inside of the dreaded Ark which fell from the heavens. It is nothing like our wonderful home, the Celestial Plane. Alas, only my spirit remains in this world. It's been imprisoned here for many years. Perhaps it was my destiny. Okami Amaterasu. I'd be so grateful if you'd bestow upon us a small gift. Not only for me, but for the others who succumb to death. In exchange, I will give you what I can. I'm sure that it would lift everyone's spirits. Give an offering? Yes. What will you offer? Money or demon fangs? Demon fangs, because I have a lot. This guy is a dual, d dual, no, duo merchant. He will trade fangs, and he'll also do other stuff with money. I have 108 demon fangs. I want to give them all. We have 29 godly charms, and we have two traveler's charms. That's tw 29 godly charms. That is, um, let's see, 97, that's 87. Yeah, 87 godhood. Wow, plus three, so we have 90 godhood right here. Wow, and now I'd like to exchange money because he's also a shop, the last shop in the game, the point of no rec return shop, and he offers some very good things. I have nothing to sell. He offers the Tundra Beads, the Tier 5 Rosary, the best rosaries in the game, and also the most expensive weapon for 500,000 yen. And I will purchase it. He also has Gold Dust, the last Gold Dust uh, location in the game. I'll be getting these as well. He has Infinity Stones, Vengeance Slips, Exorcism Slip S's, which I will buy 10 of. Exorcism Slip M's, I will buy one Exorcism Slip L. Um, that's good. He does not sell feed bags because why would you be getting the feed bags, you, you silly goose? <sighs> Here we are. The final area. Inside the Ark of Yamato, which does not look like a ship at all. It looks... It just looks like a cave, a lair. 
It looks like something very deserving of Zelda, except it's it's interlaced with this sci-fi. You see that this is the heart of a tribe, which we've been seeing for the entire Let's Play. We've been seeing artifacts of them the entire time. Since the Suda ruins, we received a scroll on this tribe. Unless I'm re recalling wrong, but I'm not. And we've we've heard hints and tales of this the entire time. It wasn't just the game game designers creating a culture. It was something, not only is it something that's in mythology, but it was something that was going to benefit us in knowledge at some point. And that point is now. We are in the heart of the Celestials, the Moon Tribe. And you see all of these doors. They have Nine Tails, Crimson Helm, uh, the Spider Queen, and Orochi above them. And also Blight. Those doors hold the spirits of those enemies, and we'll be facing them this episode. So, where should we start? Uh, I think we should start in order. Let's start with Crim- uh, sorry, not Crimson Helm. The Spider Queen. Though we have fought the Bandit Spider recently, it has been quite some time since we have faced the actual Spider Queen. And by quite some time, I mean many episodes. But before we go in there, we'll be confronted by another one of the Celestials. Goodness, if I'm not mistaken, you're from our home, the Celestial Plain. It's you, Okami Matarasu. Who would have thought we'd meet again after all this time? All my waiting under the dark, cold ice has paid off. We Celestials may have lost our physical form, but our spirits live on and are with you for all eternity. Ha uh, ha ha Hakuba. <laughs> we were heartbroken after the battle on Celestial Plain, when you fell to this world with that monster. We managed to escape before it happened, but little did we know the tragedy that was about to befall us. After we ran away from the battle, we boarded the Ark of Yamato, hoping to get away. But not long after we set sail, countless monsters appeared from the depths of the Ark. Having nowhere to run, all of us were devoured by the monsters. This Ark, which was built by the Lunar Civilization, turned out to be a cargo ship designed to transport thousands of monsters. Not long after setting sail, the Ark lost its rudder and plummeted down to this world. The Celestials on board, each and every one of us, were slain. I don't know why the Moon Tribe built such a thing, but when the Ark fell down to the Earth, it was such a tragedy. Well, it was nothing so short of a disaster. I think I misread the line before that. Okami and Matarasu. It seems that the Ark has begun to move again after all this time, but this place is like a nest of dark beings. Please take care not to be sucked into the darkness. Thank you, Hakuba. And we will have a preparation room. Why? To prepare for these boss battles, as we will be doing every boss battle we have faced thus far, with the exception of Lechku Nechku. I kind of wish they were included as well, uh, considering, you know, we fought we fought what is essentially the Spider Queen many times, and we've only fought them once. I kind of wish that was they were in here, but I make sen uh, it makes sense why that decision was not made, as we just fought them. So... Let's enter. I will not be cutting these out or speeding them up, as this is a very fitting end to a very good game. And besides, why would I cut these out? They're, these battles are amazing. So, the Spider Queen. We have, we have faced her kin before and in recent memory. However, this is different because this has the atmosphere. It seems like a lair. It seems like we're fighting something evil, not something that's simply rogue. And besides, it's a great way to live out some of our past with this Let's Play. Okay, um, for these eyes, I do not want... I don't want... Whatchamacallit? I don't want Solar Flare. I want Thunder Beads. Why? Because they're amazing. Oh, and also, I didn't do this. I need to upgrade these. We have two weapons to upgrade, and those will be Thunder Beads and also Solar Flare. I forgot to do that. There we are. Okay, let's use Thunder Beads, the best Rosary in the game. This is actually a very good choice for fighting this, because you'll stay in one spot and be dealing damage in a gigantic area of effect. It's actually really nice for beating this. Okay, um, is he about to close? She? Yes. Uh, let's go ahead and hit with... No, I didn't get Inferno in there. That's fine. 
I will not be using my items for at least this battle because I won't need them. Um, I have my I have my abilities to uh, not abilities. Sorry, I've been playing much too much League of Legends recently. My Celestial Brush techniques, and so I should be fine. This is not a hard boss. It just has attacks that the Bandit Spiders did not have. Okay, let's go ahead and uh, let's see where is a good uh, that will work. Let's get the camera up here and. There, are you open? Are you open? Good. Okay, let's get over here. And just continue to wail on this. Uh, we should be, actually, this would be a good idea. Let's try this. Yeah, that, that's good. Oh, I got stuck, man. That's dumb. Oh, and also, I took damage there despite having Godhood. So, there are indeed multiple attacks besides of what the Great Tengu had that deal damage through invincibility. Not through Vengeance Slips, but through other forms of invincibility. So, let's see. Uh, Whirlwind was not useful there. No, 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 no. Whirlwind was not useful, but... I... Come on. I know I can use the Triad and Trude Inferno. There. Are you open? Are you open? You're open. Okay, Inferno, let's do it right this time. Nice. Okay, I'm going to use one of my items... I'm going to use an Exorcism Slip L because it will deal a lot of damage. Oh my word! That was so much damage. Okay, let's see if I can finish you off. Can I please finish you off? Come on! Yeah! Perfect. Spider Queen, a.k.a. Jezebel, is finished. That was a good battle. It was still a challenge, but it was good. You? We get no reward for completing that battle other than a portal that will take us back to the Ark of Yamato. Also, I did mention that this is the original lair that we fought the Spider Queen, but on closer examination, it's actually not. You can see that there are, are glyphs on the walls that flash that are actually part of the Moon Tribe's architecture style, which is very interesting that it's an, it's an enhanced original area. And we're done with that battle. Uh, let's see. I was gonna say let's equip the let's actually equip the wooden mat and then do stuff. But I believe we can get health from these pots. Yeah, we're back up to full health. Nice. Man, that's like that's actually pretty much the only time I've ever needed health from the pots. Okami Amaterasu. It seems one of the dark beings has disappeared. If only all the evil power would leave our midst, then I'm sure the Ark would return to the celestial plane. Ah, I was ready for immortality. But now it seems the time has come for my spirit to take leave. It's brought joy into my heart to have met you before I depart. I hope that you will return to the celestial plane, Amaterasu, and that you will bring light to the, this world once more. That's one dark soul down. How many? Four to go? Four to go. Sounds like vertigo. And we cannot jump down there, which is upsetting. Not really upsetting, because there's nothing down there, but... I don't know, I like to see those red glyphs closer up. Okay, Crimson Helm. We haven't fought him in ages. Man, and I actually fought him twice in the Let's Play. I... At least I think. Did I? I'm pretty sure I did. I fought him once the, the first time, and then I fought him again because... I kind of didn't really research the battle, because it was before I started doing that. And so I... I fought him again just to show that the strategy I was using was good. Also... Thunderbeads has really good sim synergy with the fire tablet. Okay, let's zoom in here. Yeah, that's cool. And also, you, I get to show an up-close look of of these beads. They're really nice. Okay, Crimson Helm. Crimson Helm. We first fought him in... Oh, what, is it Sasa? No, not Sasa Sanctuary. We first fought him in... I can't, oh my word, I can't think of the, that's horrible. I can't think of the name. Now I feel, I don't feel old, but I feel like it's been far too long. But anyway, the strategy for him is the same. Just wail on him, destroy his armor, use wind to blow him out, then deal the real damage, and he's not that hard. And I believe you can blow him out here to blow out his sword? Yes, you can, and stun him further. Also, I took damage from touching him, which is like, it's like flashbacks of the original Legend of Zelda. Okay, where is he jumping? Where is he jumping? He's actually, he's, battling him is a lot like, 
Oh! It's a lot like battling a red ogre. A lot like it, except that this guy has similar, has different attacks, and he's more powerful. Okay, let's blow him out, and let's get another level godhood. Come on, come on, I need it. There, perfect. No, I lost it very promptly. Okay, let's slow down time, come back, and deal a little bit of damage to his armor before he jumps. Oh wow, I lost another thing. Okay, uh, that is time for uh, my app. And my app for that is a godly charm. Oh. Whoa. Uh, let's go ahead and blow this guy out. There. And then take care of his armor, maybe? No. Nah. Can we take out care of his armor? Because he's about, his armor's about gone. There it is. And he is finished. Nice. Okay. That was a battle. A very weird camera angle. Yule? How did I do badly on time for that? Seriously. What do you mean I did badly on time? That was... That was really fast. What? Okay, I could maybe understand getting a green tree rank on that, but I got a... I got a dead tree rank. How did I get a dead tree rank? Uh, what? How could I have done that possibly faster? Eh, yeah, I won't fret over it. I've fought him twice before and gotten a good ranking both times, I think. I'll just... I'll just tank it. Okay, Orochi is... Well... Huh. You know what, let's do Orochi last, because we have faced him more recently than Blight and, um, and... Not the Spider Queen, and Ninetales. So let's do him last, because we faced true Orochi. Plus, it's, it's a fitting end, because... He, he was the original evil. He was our original antagonist. So it, it's only fitting that he should get the honor last. It's you, Okami Matarasu. I did wonder when the Ark began to move. Lo and behold, it's the guardian of our home, the Celestial Plain. Sado. Why did such a, tra why did such a tragedy befall us? This Ark was built by the Lunar Civilization as a rescue boat. It had been enshrined in the Celestial Plane for many years. We believed it would be safe. In order to ensure our future existence, we fled to the Ark when the monster attacked us. How could we have known this Ark would become our coffin? I don't know. Maybe it was our destiny. Perhaps it was all decided from the start. That monster, Orochi, who attacked the Celestial Plane, had suddenly come flying across the Sea of Stars, and after destroying our people and our homeland, it went on to, to cause pain and suffering in this world. Perhaps. Perhaps it was all predestined by the Moon Tribe. So, I, I guess I never picked up the, on this, but the Moon Tribe and the Celestials are different people. I... I should have picked up, I think I picked up on it, I just never, I never brought it up in, in an episode, so, yeah, there, for any confusion, they are different, and the Moon Tribe, who created all this stuff, seems to have created it for dark purposes, if you look at the, at the Moon Cave, which was made by the Moon Tribe, at least, it was made in their honor, and if you look at this, it seems the Moon Tribe was destined for evil. And then if you look at Kaguya, she fled a war. She was sent to Earth because of a war. And that war was probably the war of uh, in the Celestial Plane. Blight, who we faced in the Emperor's body, has returned to wreak vengeance upon us. Uh, for this battle, I think I should switch to a different weapon. I will switch to I will switch back to the Solar Flare, but also I will get Tundra Beads as my sub weapon. Uh, let's see. Oh, and also the Thieves Glove would be useful here because it breaks no, it breaks defenses. Oh wait, we can't we can't use the Thieves. Oh, we can't use the Thieves Glove because we don't have Isun. Yeah, we can't. Oh man, it's useless now. Okay, so the the strategy here. Oh. The strategy here, I believe, is to let, is to make him, lure him into attacking, and then attack his sword, Golden Nail, which, or not Golden Nail, Gold Nail, 
and that is indeed the strategy. I was right. Oh, and also back away from it when it is about to attack, because it will. And then after we're done attacking, it'll reanimate Blight, and we can continue attacking him. It is good to use Veil of Mist here, because it will stop him in his teleport, allowing us to attack him. That was not his teleport. But once he starts shaking, that will be our key right there. I believe he still has a hitbox. No, he does not. He does not have a hitbox. During this... Okay, let's jump. Oh, and there's this attack. If we power slash gold nail, uh, it will fall to the ground and we can attack it. There it is. Uh, let's slow down time to see the attack coming. One, two, three, four, five. Jump away. Shoot it. Perfect. That's exactly why I equipped a rosary. So I could do this rapid fire. Because Tundra Beads actually shoots a lot. More than any other rosary, if I am correct, which I usually am, which is sad. Okay, what are you going to do now? What are you going to do now? Sword attack? Oh, my word! Oh, I forgot about that one. It's a teleport attack, not just like his normal teleport. Uh, when he stops in place, you can see that he's actually doing that. And, oh, that was unfortunate. I did not expect that coming. Okay, what do you have next? Nope. Is that his swords? That, those are his swords. Okay, can we power slash them? Power slash that? Power slash those? Slow down time. Attack this. And we should be able to put it out of its misery. You ha okay. Okay. Next battle, I'm using all my items because, like, how, how did I do badly on time? That was amazing. They're expecting me to be, like, the god of the game. They're expecting me to do the Gurham speedrun constantly. Snap. Well, I'm going to have to step it up. Can I get in here? Thank you. So, this will be a long episode as we're going to be doing all the boss battles in one thing, but this is the second to last episode, so I, I guess that's spoilers, but it, it's fine. Um, it's the second to last episode, so it's going. It's definitely going to be long. Okami Amaterasu, I sense the presence of someone here on the Ark. Could it be that man from the Moon Tribe? I can feel his pain somewhere deep down inside this Ark. Amaterasu, you must save him without a moment's delay. You must stop the seeds of tragedy from being sown. In order for the evil in this world to be exorcised, the sun god Amaterasu must return to the celestial plane. I pray that you will watch over the world from the heavens, and that you will bestow peace upon us all. So it seems, one from the Moon Tribe is on this arc. One remaining member of the tribe has lived all this time and is on this arc. So, oh wait, we have Order Chief to face two. Nine Tails is next. I, th I thought that was another boss battle. I'm like, there's a secret boss? There's a secret boss. He's like a squiggle snake. The squiggle snake will kill us all because he's a squiggle snake. <laughs> next, we'll be fighting in the next Okami game. We'll be fighting Snakin from the those early PC games and smartphone games. Wonderful. Is he even on smartphone games? Because, man, Quicken... Or not Quicken, sorry. That's a, that's a tax budget thing. But Snake In was fun, man. I sort of grew up on that before I even got good actual real video games. Snake In was fun. So, Ninetales! We have fought her before because we have. Why do I even say that? But a good weapon for fighting Ninetales is the Thunder Edge. We'll be equipping that, and Eighth Wonder, why not? And let's see, this would be good, I think. Uh, I mean, it's the only alternative. Water Tablet's not going to be useful. Peace Bell, Thief's Glove, not going to be useful. Uh, next, I would like to use some offensive items. I won't be using a Vengeance Slip because I don't need it, but I will be using a Steel Fist Sake. And actually, I will be using a Godly Charm as well. Man, half this episode is being spent in the menus, which is sad. So... Nine tails, come at me. We don't attack nine tails. I forgot, but I didn't take damage there, which is fine. 
what we do is we counter nine strike with our own lightning weapon the thunder edge nope you're not going to use your techniques here instead i'm going to power up my glaive and finish the fat one off oh wow oh wow you guys see that it's real i am unleashing mr pow pow and it feels so good okay where's the next one okay you're down you're you're really not looking good you don't look with the good with a bunch of tails. You're not going to use that attack on me. Though you can try. Because I have the runs. I am hit with the runs. I can run faster than you can believe. And I can also shoot lightning out of my face. Except it was out of out of cloud. Okay. No. Camera, what are you what are you doing? Camera, don't mess with me. I am I am crazy. I will kill everything. Okay, where's the where's the old woman? Ah, there you are. You're not going to survive anymore. Is that the last one? Was that the last one? No. Yes, it was the last one. Okay, that was bad. Okay, get running, get running, Matarasu. Get running. I'm not going to let you use your ult on me. I guess I could talk about that since there's nothing else going on. Um, fun fact. There, this. This character, Ninetales, a.k.a. Rao, was actually featured in another game. What game, you ask? League of Legends. Yeah, you'd never believe it. Uh, but... Uh, whoa, wow, we did damage there. But, um, uh, Ninetales, a.k.a. AKA Rao, was, is in League of Legends as a character called Ari. If you look at the, if you look at their techniques, they are so similar that it's, it's unbelievable. That dash attack, which Ninetales does, Ari has. The Foxfire, Ari also has. It's just everything um, that Ari, that Ninetales has, Ari has in League of Legends. In fact, I'll put a picture of Ari on screen, and you can look at the similarities between her and Rao. It is insane. And also, um, Rao is is from you know is from the mythology. However. There are no depictions of Rao other than being a beautiful girl that's a Kitsune. And Ari shares all of all of Rao's like characteristics. It's amazing. Even um I even if you read Ra uh sorry, I'm getting names confused. Ari's lore, you'll see how similar their their stories are. They're actually pretty similar. I mean, not super similar, but they are similar. Sorry if that was a, kind of a weird tangent. I mean, it hadn't. I mean, it wasn't like mythology or anything. It was just like, hey, this this character's in another game. But I, I've been playing League of Legends lately. I've mentioned it in episode before. I've actually been playing it quite a lot, and it's something that I find fun. And I found I found Ari once I I thought about it a little bit closer. I found Ari very interesting because of the stories. Also, I thought that was like a wait, is that really? That looks like a swastika, but I won't. I won't say it's a swastika because, you know, if you, even if there's slight similarity, it doesn't mean that it's a swastika. People just get really uptight about these things. I've been waiting for you, Okami Matarasu. My fleeting spirit will disappear at any moment. I'm glad I was able to hold on long enough to meet with you. Azumi. Long, long ago, you and Orochi fell together to this world. Then you waited for the Chosen One to put an end to Orochi's life. You waited patiently for countless moons, until finally, the Chosen One, Nagi, was born. Together, you, s you sent the monster of, of the moon to its fate. You didn't realize it, but that was just one ripple in the wave of darkness. It's exactly 100 years since the legend of Nagi. The monster was quietly recovering its strength for all these years, until it used Nagi's descendant, Susano, to complete its revival. And once again, it tried to destroy this world. When you defeated it, the next stage of its plan began. It cursed the land with its evil power. And the world was soon overrun with monsters from the Ark. Orochi's evil essence was more than enough to power them all. The smoldering powers of darkness exploded throughout Nippon. And the world was thrown into a storm of chaos, never seen before. After that, well, 
You saw with you saw it with your own eyes. The evil powers that left those monsters you defeated have all gathered here in the Ark of Yamato. Exorcism of the roots of evil is a da daunting task. You must keep your eyes open for what's in the center of it all. Interesting. That's something I've been meaning to mention, and I'll mention it once we're in this battle. Uh, before we enter, weapons I should choose. Um, equipment. I think I should do this beforehand. We could use the Tundra Beads. In fact, I think I will just be... Not as a sub. Because, you know, there it's a new item and we should be using it. Fire Tablet I will definitely equip because that directly counters the Fire Head. Items. I will be using my things to do that. And we will use an offensive item once we get in the actual battle. So, let's go. So, we are not fighting Orochi, but we are fighting true Orochi. So, let's start with the Firehead. And we can just let it hit us, because it's not going to do anything. But one thing I wanted to talk about is what was going on in the Day of Darkness. Or, not the Day of Darkness. Um, 100 years ago. It's very, very interesting, because I came up with a theory, and I had no theories prior to this to Okami. It was, I was very... I was very face value with it because I didn't see any room for theories, but I came up with one. 100 years ago, that was also that was actually the same exact time that the Day of Darkness was um, was in effect. No, you won't do that. You won't do that either. Which, which actually makes sense why Odachi would be so powerful. Yeah, no. You don't. Thank you. So, the Day of Darkness was actually in effect, and that's why Orochi said something about it when we saw him in the past. He said something about his ascension to being Lord of Evil. So, this, he was going to be empowered if he wasn't stopped there, and to become even more powerful than he was when we faced him. Which is very interesting to me. And, if you... Blow this away. Not if you blow this away. If you look at um, 100 years... Ow, I got hurt. If you look at 100 years after that, um, when we faced Orochi, it was indeed 100 years after. However, it was semi-early in the year. Um, why do I keep getting hit by that? That makes no sense. Okay, let's climb this. Yeah, it was semi-early in the year. So, we are still in the year of the that the Day of Darkness takes place, which actually makes a lot of sense. Orochi was preparing for that when he would become as powerful as he was 100 years ago. And can I please destroy this? Because I need to destroy this. Let's slow down time. No! Can we actually... Oh, I forgot. We can use an Exorcism Slip L to kill it in one go. It will always kill it in one go, by the way. So it's worth your while to do that because it's it has a pretty high defense right now. So let's start with the Firehead just because we're immune to it. Hit me with your worst again, and then we'll, we'll go, we'll go uh, counter, no, clockwise. Okay, get, get some sake in your mouth. Fall down. Let me hit you. Oh, and we're going to use an offensive item, which we should now, that we can actually do damage to Orochi. There. Look at that health drain away. And we can also use Power Slash. Finish you off, and yes, you're gone. Next, the Earth Head, which I don't have to explain this battle, which is really nice. We have faced Orochi twice before, and so we are very well versed in his weaknesses. And they are always the same. Drinking's never good for you, man. You should really stop. Or at least not make canals that can that sake can be poured into. Will you be dead? You will. Poison Head. I really like the fact that we're at full power here. Sometimes games play it off like you can't get full power unless you complete the game once or do this after the game's done then you can fight the boss a second time but no we are able to fight all of the bosses at our full strength with with these awesome weapons and i won't be able to defeat you this time will i come on let's now I'm, I'm hitting the other head which is bad this is really quite bad power slash there oh man we have to uh, come on. Hit me again. Or roar. Actually, roar. Because that's better. So much for me saying, I know how to beat this boss. It's child's play. There. Can you be dead? You can be dead. Thank you for dying. Have a good day. Next, you, the lightning head. 
Yeah, the light. No, the light head. Sorry. I should be able to do this one in one go. I'm going to use... <laughs> I suddenly turned Italian there. I'm going to use Inferno here because it does multiple hits. And indeed it does. And I can get my Godhood up here. That is, this is good. I'm totally wombo combing this guy. His head's on fire. That should kill him. Is he dead? Is he dead? Is he gone? He's gone. Good. You, what do you have to say? Do you have something to say? Oh, you're saying get off my lawn. Well, I have a surprise for you. Take the sake right in the mouth. Do it and like it. While I kill your brains out. And, if I can do this here, I didn't. I never mentioned it, but the Tundered Beads are in fact a source for Blizzard. So we can use Blizzard here for the first time. We've never had it before, and it does a great amount of damage. In fact, if I can show it off over here, I will use Blizzard on the Waterhead. Very fitting because Ice beats water in Pokemon. And it's no exception here because I will totally pwn your face. Water on water action, and you're down. Well, prepare to be meltified. That really didn't do as much damage as I thought it would. I probably shouldn't do it again. And the camera... What is with the camera angle right here? It's like really close up. It's like he's taking a selfie or trying to get some screen time. More screen time. It's like I'm the most handsome of all the heads. And I don't care what you say. I'll fight you over it. I'm really not, I'm really not taking this seriously because we faced this guy before. And he is... With, with our max weapons, he is relatively easy there no camera camera you know what no slow down time just so I can get out here there thank you camera for cooperating and this does a lot more damage yeah there it is fire damage I love it when heads are on fire that's bad come on finish him off finish him off with wolf foo finish him off yes that was actually pretty close, and you want some. Um, there's a uh, there's a curse zone. He, his attack wasn't able to get off. That was bad. Okay, let's use all the techniques. Let's use lightning. There we go. And then we'll use fire. Once I have ink. Can we use fire? Can we use fire? No. You have to, you're ready for some more, okay? I'm ready. I'm ready for you. Try to bite and then miss because you have this thing covering your eyes because that is how all villains should be. All villains should be blind because that way they wouldn't be humiliated to see children and wolves totally wreck their business. Business has been wrecked. And we did better on average, actually. It was actually the same average, but that's fine. And that was the last battle, and for the first time, we can actually see what's down here. It's an abyss. We were never able to see that before, but it's here. And is there still sake in these? Because, actually, we've never been able to explore this before. That's actually kind of cool. I wonder what would happen if you, like, hacked your way up there. What, what would ha- like, wh how would that work? It, are the- are the imps still in there? Did they- is this a map- does there a map transition happen over there? That would be really cool. Questions I want answered. Hackers. Hack your way up there and tell me what- what you find, because I'm really interested. But only do it in this area, because, like, if you did it- if you did it back at the moon cave, it would just take you back straight up. But this, I'm really curious. I really doubt it, but if they possibly replaced all of the rock textures with these, with the the red animations, you might be able to go back through the moon cave and have like it have a recolor, maybe. I don't know if they thought that through, but they probably didn't. But it'd be really neat. So, we took some damage there, apparently. I don't know when we took damage, but I'm healed of it, so no biggie. And we have 500,000 more yen. Wow. 
But more importantly, we defeated all of the evil that was in this area. So, we've turned it good. We have turned it from glowy red stuff to glowy bl blue stuff. Okami Amaterasu, it has begun at long last. The waves of darkness has, have finally begun to roll. All this evil power. I cannot hold on much longer. Matarasu, there is one final thing I must tell you. The man of the moon tribe with the golden hair. I want you to tell him something. The Celestials will never forget how he fought alongside you when Orochi attacked. We are forever grateful. So, the portal to the core of the Ark is opened up. We have defeated all the bosses of this game multiple times. We ha they have succumbed to us, and that's all there is to it. They're gone for good, but their master isn't. Next time in Pal Plays Okami... Can I leave? No, I can't. Next time in Pal Plays Okami... We'll be going in that portal and facing... <laughs> yes, we'll be facing... Oh, thank you for sitting down. That was very courteous of you. We'll be facing Amaterasu's back. There. Oh, one more thing. I, I didn't say it. I'm surprised that I didn't because I learned this and I was pretty excited about this. Uh, the Tundra Beads. Sure, I'll, I'll do this. The Tundra Beads, you can actually get somewhere else in this game. You do not need to come to the Ark of Yamato in order to purchase it. That's important, because if you wanted to have this when taking down the Devil Gate Trial Cave, you can. Um, you, it, bleh, the, this is not the only shop that carries it. If you go back all the way to the Seon City Weapons Dealer, he will be carrying the Tundra Beads. That's actually really important, and I did not know that. I thought that the last step the weapon of the game was only obtainable here, and it kind of disappointed me because I wanted to use it in the Devil Gate Trial Cave, just for fun. And after recording that episode, I was like, okay, I'm going to look up the cost since I'm going to be grinding off, off screen. And I did, I found out it was obtainable elsewhere, and that that's really nice. That's a really cool secret, because you would never think to go back there. That's really neat. So, anyway, uh, let's buy two of these, and there. I release new episodes of Okami Tuesdays, Thursdays, and Saturdays. Saturdays are long episodes. Oh, one last thing. Oh, and if you like this episode, comment. And if you didn't like it, episode, comment. Tell me how I could make next episode so that you would like it. Um, certain thing I need to mention. The next episode of Okami will not come out on the scheduled day. It will not come out on Saturday because I am going out of town before I'm able to record it. And while I could rush, I could rush the recording and record it. I would have to rec uh, record it, edit it, upload it, all in one day. And I, I don't want to spend one day on it because I feel like I'd be, like I said, rushing it. I want to be able to put all the time I, I need into it, all the time I want into it to make it a good finale. And I can't do that in just one day. So it will probably, hopefully, be coming out Tuesday. Hopefully, let's hope. It might come out later, but it will definitely come out next week. So, be sure of that. So, I'll see you next time for the finale of Paladin Plays Okami. See you guys then.